Hi there, welcome to my blog. Uh, today I'm going to be reviewing the Hubson X4 Desire, um, otherwise known as the Hubson H502S. Okay, let's just take you through the quadcopter itself. Um, I've already attached the props, fairly easy, screw at the top and they're clearly marked with a B or an A according to whichever prop it should be and it's obviously marked on the prop as well with its B or A. So nice and easy. Once you screw them in, uh, they're screwed with little Loctite uh, glue uh, which um, is already on the screw and uh, so unlikely to come undone. I've never had any problem with them coming undone so that's good. Um, it comes with a 6 110 milliamp hour 7.4 volt 15c battery which will last about 10 minutes which is pretty good for a small quadcopter um, it's light it's very light um, feels a bit flimsy but is pretty resilient um, I've had no issues um, from various different uh, uh, incidents that I've had and uh, anyway let's uh, give it a go so I'm gonna First of all, attach the power. A little bit fiddly, but not too bad. Stuff all the wires in there, tuck them away. Um, I've got a little bit of a hum. It's a very high-pitched tone. Um, I don't know whether all of them are like that. Um, it's been like it since I've had it. It's caused no issues other than just being a little bit annoying, but other than that, it's fine. Um, once you turn that on, then you go to the controller. This is the controller you get. Um, when you first pick the controller up, um, it won't come with any batteries. I've stuck some nice rechargeable ones in there. Recommend you do the same thing. Um, mainly because if you put standard AAs or even Duracell, it'll probably only last you one flight if you're lucky. Um, so stick the high powered uh, batteries in there which are rechargeable and you won't have any issues. It'll last at least uh, one set of uh, flight certainly the 10 minutes or so, um, if not longer. Anyway, turn her on, little green light. Um, you'll see that you can see the image here, and if I, it's in yellow writing, which is a little bit annoying, but um, <laughs> on there, it's in yellow writing, it says calibrate compass one, um, which what you do is you literally turn it around, and you keep turning it around until it says calibrate compass 2. Do it nice and slowly, take your time because if you do it quickly then it won't work in follow me mode. Com calibrate compass 2, turn it around. Um, I'll just show you that it says that. Uh, there you go, on the screen you can see calibrate compass 2 in yellow writing there. Okay, you then turn it down and you rotate it round again nice and slowly keep turning around now you have to turn it probably about two or three rotations before it's satisfied um, it's satisfied now so it's you can see on the display there that there's uh, now no, nothing mentioned on the display um, we're going to pop it down and if you look on the screen here, in fact, if I point it upwards, you probably see clearer. Uh, maybe not. Um, the GPS. So you've got GPS for the um, controller, which is in yellow, which is currently saying seven, and then you've got GPS for the X4, which is currently saying eleven, as in eleven satellites. Uh, anything less than that, it won't take off, unless, of course, you set it up in the settings to bypass that and. Uh, um, I can show you that later, maybe. Um, anyway, as long as you've got over six, you're fine. Um, and as long as you've calibrated it, again, it's fine. If you miss out the calibration stage for any reason, um, sometimes if you turn it on and then forget you're doing something else um, and you, it just disappears off the screen, you just can't understand why it won't take off. Um, and the reason for it is it hasn't done its calibration. So uh, always make sure that you immediately, as soon as you turn it on, do your calibration and uh, and then check you've got the right number of satellites. Um, I have had issues in uh, tree covered areas where um, the satellites just would not pick up. Um, so initially at least you need to be out in a very big open space, wait until the uh, satellite connection happens 
um, until you get your 11 there and your at least six there. Um, and uh, and then once that happens, then uh, I think you're okay in going into closed spaces after that. It's just its initial pickup is a bit on the slow side. Um, so you have to be really patient, especially the first time through. Um, it does seem to remember your last location. So, for example, if you went here, turned this on, waited, you know, three minutes for it to pick up the satellites, um, the next time you turn it on, if it's in exactly the same location, um, you'll find that it'll pick the satellites up straight away. Um, so there we go. Now what I'm going to do is arm the quadcopter so we can pull the two joysticks back. As you see, uh, the props start to rotate um, and then it's ready to take off. Now it won't take off if you've got return to home on. So if you push that up, <laughs> funny enough it just has. Um, that's because I've already armed it. If I hadn't armed it and then done that, it wouldn't have uh, gone for the takeoff procedure. I'll just land and show you. So, I'm going to turn it off again. If I put that up there and then try and do the same thing, it actually comes up with a message saying return to home button is already enabled. So you just simply just push that down. The other one is the GPS. Uh, if you've got GPS um, button off, again, it... If I just turn it off here, let's just do it again. Uh, it does actually say on the screen, uh, GPS hold. If you turn it off there, it just says altitude hold in red at the bottom here. So make sure that the button's up for GPS and down for return to home. And then you're good. Push the, push the joystick up and it'll take off. There's no auto takeoff button, um, however it settles quite nicely um, with no real issues and even will cope with uh, you know, fairly stiff breezes. Today there's no wind so we've got no issue there. Um, I'll do a quick little demo of um, the different flight modes. So we've got two buttons here We've got the taking a picture button, which is just done, taking a photo, and then there's a record button. So I've started recording, it mentions record on here. Um, there's, um, it's follow me mode on here if you want to use it. Um, and all you do is you, <laughs> you just simply uh, depress the stick like that. It says follow on on the screen the quadcopter should turn around and face you. Uh, it's having a bit of a funny moment at this moment because I've probably not put it high enough and further enough away. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna click on follow me mode again. And if I move around, it's moving around with me, which is good. And if I stop, hopefully it should stop. Okay, follow me mode is off now. It says that in green there. And then if I bring it around, we've also got uh, headless mode. Headless mode now says on in red. Um, I can rotate it around and obviously it will now Operate in headless mode, no problem. Okay, and there we have it. Um, it's quite a fast quadcopter, so I'll just demonstrate it go across the field. Uh, we should be able to do uh, a few hundred yards, I'd say, without any break up in first person view. It's gone to the other side of the football pitch almost. And just starting to break up a little bit there, but that's a good 100 yards at least. Um, now we're going to bring it back, return to home. If I flick the button up, it'll go up about uh, 15 meters, turn around to face me. And you can even see on the uh, screen here that it's actually uh, 
facing me and coming back towards me. Back it comes. And once it gets to its takeoff point, don't forget, return to home will return back to where it took off from, not from where you're actually standing. I did actually move a little bit, and then down it goes. And there you go. It'll land and it'll turn off its power. In fact, it doesn't seem like it's turning off its powers, but you can do that just simply by pulling the two joysticks back and the power goes off, no problem at all. And there you have it. Uh, that's all there is to it, really. Um, a great little quadcopter, kind of punches above its weight in many ways, um, because it's half the price of uh, the next model up, which is the uh, um, H501S. Uh, and uh, it's... Um, it's perfectly capable. The only thing is, is it's uh, the battery life is limited um, to 10 minutes rather than 20. Um, it doesn't have things like orbit mode. It doesn't have waypoint mode. Um, but apart from that, um, it's a good little quadcopter, and I've had no issues with it. Thank you for watching.